God sent his son God, for, God sent forth his son or is God sent forth his son hallelujah God sent forth his son let's take it up again God sent forth his son amen, amen. tonight I want to thank pastor and the leadership of this church for giving me this opportunity hallelujah this is a Christmas convention yesterday pastor gave a powerful exposition that is church history on the background of Jesus' birth he mentioned that God had a plan and the timing was very sensitive he said God started preparing for Jesus right from the fall though all hope was lost the people of Israel were still expectant they were expecting a Messiah now in order to redeem man from his sins at the right time God sent his word he sent his son and he sent the, his Holy Spirit hallelujah Amen. this morning and the appetite also touched on issues concerning the expectations of Israel and what is meant by the fullness of time. Hallelujah. Tonight, we'll try and analyze the theme, discuss issues on the fullness of time, adaptation, and the deep concern Paul felt for his spiritual children. Hallelujah. Our theme is from Galatians 4, verse 4. I want the NLT. Galatians 4, verse 4. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. Hallelujah. I wish you, you project the verse 1. I want to read verse 1 to 7. Hallelujah. It's self-explanatory. Think of it this way. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children, those children are not much better off than slaves until they grow up. Even though they actually own everything their father had, they have to obey their guardians until they reach whatever age their father set. And that's the way it was with us before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. And when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us. I want you to take note of that. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. So sometimes when we say that you were bought with a prize, you should understand that. And because we were his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba, Father. And you are no longer, now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. Hallelujah. Are you not special? You are God's own child. It's telling you. So no, sometimes you are God's own child. And you share in this inheritance. Are you not special? You are special. Hallelujah. God uses the illustration of slavery to show that before Christ came and died for us, our sins, people were in bondage to the law, thinking they would be saved. They became enslaved by trying and trying all means to free themselves from the law. But we who were once slaves are now God's very own children. 
who have an immediate relationship with him. We have what? An immediate relationship with him. An intimate relationship with him, I'm sorry. Because of Christ, there is no reason to be afraid of God. We can now boldly come into his presence, knowing that he will welcome us as his family members. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in John 14, 6, John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father but by me. Hallelujah. Our almighty God appeared to Abraham. I want you to take note of this. And spoke to him about his future seed. That is the descendants. And in the New Testament, Paul explains that all believers through Christ are Abraham's seeds. And therefore, God's children and heir. The old covenant with Abraham is fulfilled through Jesus Christ. So that is why Jesus says that he did not come to abolish the law, but to do what? But to fulfill it. Hallelujah. Jesus is the seed of Abraham. That is, he came through the lineage of Abraham. So we are blessed through the priesthood conferred upon Abraham and his descendants. All believers in every age and from every nation share Abraham's blessings. Can you project Genesis 12 verse 2? Genesis 12 verse 2. I will make you a great nation. Can you start from the verse 1? Please. Can you project this? The Lord has said to Abraham, leave your native country, your relatives, and your, fam- your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. Chapter 3, uh, verse 3, I'm sorry. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on the earth will be blessed through you. Hallelujah. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Abraham's blessings are mine. Oh, Abraham's blessings are mine. Oh, I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. This is indeed a great privilege, a great promise, a great heritage for us and a solid foundation for the living. Hallelujah. Can you project Galatians 4 4 again? Galatians 4 4. And it says, and when the right time came, other version says, the fullness of time. But I think I love this version. It says, when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. When the right time came, God sent Jesus to die for our sins. For centuries, the Jews had been wondering when the Messiah would come. And when he even came to live amongst them, he was rejected. And (laughs) um, in John chapter, I think, 12, verse 2, it says that, He was rejected, but as many as believed in him, he gave them the power to be sons of God. Hallelujah. We may sometimes wonder if God will ever respond to our prayers. God's timing is very perfect. We always say God's time is the best. I want to share a testimony with you this evening. I quite remember when... um, 
I got married and I gave birth to my first child. I think a few months later, about nine months later, my husband got employment in Vinari. We had to re- relocate from Accra to Akusumbo because it would be difficult to maintain two homes. So we all left for Akusumbo. And I was thinking of, I was teaching in Accra Girls then. I was thinking of looking for work in maybe one of the GES schools. At the same time, I didn't know there was a school in Vinari. But I was thinking that, you know, I wasn't a professional teacher. I went to Legon. And I hadn't gone to University of um, Cape Coast to do any course in education. So I decided that, look, I have, I have to pray very hard so that if I get any employment in any of the offices, I will consider it and then go. But it was very difficult. You know, looking for a job has been difficult even during our time. So even during your time, if it's difficult, don't be surprised. It is not that easy. It takes the hand of God. Hallelujah. So I quite remember, I wrote, when I got there, I went to the school, I wrote an application, I presented my CV, and the secretary over there collected it, but he told, she told me that I should send another one to the head office in Accra. Fortunately, the following day, my husband was going to Accra, so I sent the application. Lo and behold, when he got there, he met the, the then director personnel. It was in human resource. A lady, a woman. So the woman just took the application, looked at it, uh, looked through and then just asked my husband that I should be invited to the office. So the next day I went there. And she told me that someone has transferred from Akosombo International School to Accra, one of the offices, human resource. And the lady was teaching English language and literature. That was what I was also teaching. So, but then she told me that other people have also submitted the application. So they would invite me for an interview. So I thanked her and I went back. Meanwhile, when I was in Akosombo, I was able to locate a lady. When I was in Form 1, she was in Form 5, Gifty. I went to her and she told me, Hey, Hanum de Juma and Yezio, Headmaster, no, not some young team. So she told me that, look, you cannot be recruited here without passing, going for an interview. You have to, whether you like it or not. And secondly, even if you have an interface, then you should be a permanent staff. Meanwhile, you are not a permanent staff. You are coming from outside, so definitely you have to attend an interview. So I thanked her, and then I came back. Meanwhile, I had already been told to see the headmaster of the school. When I was going, I was afraid. Because he, she has already told me that, hey, not send me a thing. So I went, spoke to the headmaster. Meanwhile, she had read almost all the books that I had also read. He asked me some of the characters, what they did. Some I had forgotten, some I was able to remember. Then I came back. A week after, I had uh, the horn of uh, Nizam Patra. I went out and the man gave me a letter. You know, locating someone in Akosombo is easy because they have the, the house numbers. So I knew it was an interview. Brethren, when I opened the envelope, it was not an invitation for an interview, but it was an appointment letter for me to start working the following week. Hallelujah. So, when I was reading through this, uh, when I was preparing for this message, I realized that God works in a mysterious way. At the right time, when the fullness of time, he will definitely deliver. My brothers, my sisters, do not give hope. Keep on praying. Yesterday, pastor said something. He said that even if God says no, it is still an answer. So you receive any of the answers. It can be no, yes, or wait. So if yours is yes, hallelujah. If it is no, still pray. If it is wait, still wait, hallelujah. At the right time, he will respond. 
Are you waiting for God's timing? Or you, are, you want to do it yourself? Someone will say that, eh, nyame, wame buwame, yame buwame hon. Ope so buwa huwa na, hallelujah, God's time is the best. Try his, trust his judgment and trust that he has your best interest in mind. Habakkuk 2, 3. Habakkuk 2, 3. His vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not delay. Hallelujah. Some years back in Akosombo, when we relocated to Akosombo, I was not a dickness then. There was this young, beautiful lady. She came to give testimony. She just came to thank the Lord that God had added one year to her age. We were all considering, hey, and we were here. Then she mentioned that she was 40 years. Hey, when we all when you, know, when you see how cute she is, you wouldn't know that she was 40 years. But then there was noise. I didn't know, know whether people were happy or not. Whatever it is, I believe that the kind of noise that they were making was the kind of noise that Aaron and Miriam did when God caught them. Hallelujah. Because, hey, my girl, Lydia, when you, when you. By God's grace, a year after, she was very prayerful. A year after she got married. What age is it? 41. Then... The noise started again. Hey, 41. There was a young lady too who uh, had read some psychology. She was a teacher. And she, she told us that psychology tells them that um, when you are 35 years, it's difficult to give birth. And when you give birth to, the child might be deformed. I didn't know about it. I said, hey, I said in my head, quietly. Girl, you said, Why are you not happy for your friend? And that is what happens in the church. Instead of being happy, people pass negative comments. Now, by God's grace, a few months after, in the fullness of time, after nine months, she gave birth to twins a boy and a girl. Hallelujah. And I wish I could go back to the uh, the, the psychologist lady and ask her is it true? because I realized that there was no deformity whose report do you believe? do you re- believe in the report of God or you believe in the report of man? this is a rhetorical question do you believe in the report of God or in the report of man? hallelujah God's time is the best. He does a lot of wonderful things. He can make the impossible possible. What are you waiting for? Is it a husband? I want to assure you, God is preparing that husband for you. Is it a wife? God is nurturing a very beautiful wife for the men. Is it a child? God is nurturing some twins, some triplets for you at the right time. All you want for, he will give it to you. Hallelujah. Is it a job? At the right time, you will get that job. Hallelujah. So keep on praying. Keep on waiting on the Lord and he will do it for you. Hallelujah. Galatians 4, 4 to 5. We want to go back to our theme because we are trying to analyze our theme. So when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. Jesus was born of a woman, a virgin called Mary. He was born as a Jew. He was subject to God's law and fulfilled it perfectly. That Jesus was the perfect sacrifice because although he was fully human, he never sinned. His death brought freedom for us who were enslaved to sin. So we would be adopted into God's family. Now what is adoption? 
Adoption is the action of facts of legally taking another child and bringing it up as your own. So when you go and adopt someone and you want to bring the person up as your own, it's adoption. Under Roman law, an adopted child was guaranteed all legal rights to his father's property, even if he was formerly a slave. So one, even if you are formerly a slave and the, well, the rich man decides to adopt you, you have all rights to his property. And you are not considered a second class uh, son. You have equal rights to all sons biologically adopted in the father's family. There was no distinction. In this dispensation, when you adopt someone, do you treat the person as your own child? Sometimes the kind of dress that the biological child will put on will be different from that of the adopted child. Sometimes even the kind of food that is given to them is even different. Sometimes, oh, we now ni mami nyesi kam fani nkosku na mami adopto no, you know, that kind of thing. But I am telling you that, you know, Christ didn't give any distinction. He has adopted us as one of his biological sons, that is Jesus Christ. And once he has adopted us, as a son, then we share in his inheritance. As adopted children of God, we share with Jesus all rights to God's resources. Hey, are you not a great person? You share in God's resources, and God has a lot of resources. Hallelujah. As God's heirs, we can claim what he has provided for us as children of God. Hallelujah. I want us to read Romans 8, 14 to 17. Romans 8, 14 to 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you receive God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we, call, now we call him Abba, Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Hallelujah. We are heirs of the Father. We are joint heirs with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family we are one, we are as we are as of the Father. We are joint as with the Son. We are children of the King. We are no longer like fearful slaves. Instead, we are the master's children. What a privilege. Because we are God's children, we share in his great treasures as co heirs We also share in his glory. Hallelujah. God has already given us his best gifts. He has given us his son. He has given us the Holy Spirit. And he has given us eternal life. 
and he encourages us to ask him for anything that we need. But there is a price for being identified with Jesus along with being heirs of God's family. Paul mentions the suffering that Christ must face. As Christians, we must also share in Christ's suffering. So as we share in his glory, we must also share in his suffering. What kind of suffering are we to endure? We must note that the first century believers, there, there, there was economic and social persecution, and some even faced death. Stephen was stoned to death. In this dispensation, where uh, Christianity is accepted and encouraged, we still face some form of persecution. At our workplaces, we still face some kind of persecution. And there are other forms of persecution that we, we face. And if you, we, don't even, we haven't faced any persecution, you should be ready for any kind of persecution because you are sharing in his glory. And you also have to share in his suffering. To live as Christ did, we have to imitate Christ. We have to serve others. We have to sometimes give, give up our own rights. We have to resist pressures to conform to the world. All these is that a price. But then, it, you cannot compare it to the ultimate price that Christ shared on the cross. Hallelujah. Now, in the preceding chapter of chapter four, verse, uh, Galatians 4, verse 8, Paul demonstrates his concern for the Galatians and stressed on living by faith in Christ. Paul led many people to Christ and helped them mature spiritually. When you read Galatians 3, you realize that he starts with all foolish Galatians. Honestly, the first day I read, I said, ah, why this uh, um, phrase? But then you realize that uh, Galatians, the Galatians had accepted Christ as their personal savior, but within a short time, most people had turned their backs toward Christ in the sense that they were worshiping idols. Some of them, there were false teachings here and there, and uh, they, 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 they were actually um, going back to giving strict um, adherence to the law. And Paul was not happy about it because he was passionate about bringing these people to maturity. But then he realized that most of them had backslided. So when it comes to false teachings and it comes to false prophets, they are still with us today. Don't we hear them? We listen to them on the radio. They say a lot of things. So as men and women of God, we are being admonished to have the same intense care for those to whom we are spiritual parents. You don't have to be a presbyter before you become a spiritual parent. Most of you are mature enough. Most of you are spiritual mothers and fathers. And we are supposed to uh, support the young ones, our own children, and the youth in the church as well. Hallelujah. When you lead people to Christ, remember to stand by them to help them grow till they are mature. And as youth, you are also to allow yourself to be discipled until you reach maturity. Philippians 2.12, sometimes we say one save, forever save. But Philippians 2.12 tells us that we should work out our salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Paul says that the Galatians had lost the joy of their salvation because of legalization. When you read Galatians 4.15, you, you, you see it there, but we wouldn't read that. But legalization is concerned with keeping the law. So after they had accepted Christ as their personal savior, they had to go back and continue to you know, keep the laws that they had been asked to stop doing. 
their focus has shifted from faith in Christ to worshiping lesser gods and other spiritual principalities and also strict adherence to the law. As I said, false teachers and magicians they were on the increase at that time, and they are still with us today. Some these, these days, there is a blend. They behave as pastors, prophetic ministers, uh, at the same time, he or she is a herbalist. So if you don't take care, you might be confused. If you have an ailment and you say, oh, someone said that, oh, let me introduce you to this or so for mommy or ye be bidru. You go there, you give you a prophetic message, but maybe be shas here. A few months ago, I met a cousin of mine in our hometown. We were talking, discussing issues, and he said, hey, Joyce in Yama film. I said, oh, what I didn't know of him. He had he had a condition and he decided someone introduced um her to um, um, this house of mommy. That's on the road. So she went. When she went, the house of mommy told her that, look, hallelujah, who hasn't got enemies? So she told her that, go and look for this leaf. The leaf she said was called Tamiu. O Tamiya, Ubewu. Write the name of your enemy on it. When you are driving, drop it on the road. Your enemy will die. Hey! So when she said that, I jokingly said, Hey! Now you are not only Pakunu Uyana. She said, No, when we say, Ah! come up for J10 and 20 be brave. And we all laughed. She said, Joyce, the old DBB, how did they grow? No, these are some of the things that they do. So, if by chance the person had died, my cousin would have followed her throughout her life. Because why, yeah, and it's with us today. So, we have to be able to uh, get our young ones closer to us. If they have any challenge, they should come to us so that at least would advise them. Some of them don't come, but we want to encourage you that if you have any challenge, kindly come so that we'll help you. Hallelujah. Paul was so passionate and had deep concern for his spiritual children. He compared his pain over their faithlessness to the pain of childbirth. Can you project that? Galatians 4, 19. Oh, my dear children, I feel as if I'm going through labor pains for you again. So it means this is not the first time. And they will continue until Christ is fully developed in your lives. So it seems, it seems as if Paul has not even given up. He says, he says that he will continue doing what? Admonishing them till the end of it. He says it will continue until Christ is fully developed in your life. So until Christ is fully developed in the lives of our youth, um, older ones, please do not give up. Please do not give up on your children, your biological children and your spiritual children. Please do not give up on them. My question this evening is, are you living by faith in Christ or you are trying to live up to the demands and expectations of others? In conclusion, I will say that clearly no one is justified before God by law. Christ came to redeem those who were under the law, and we are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Galatians 4, 28 would be my conclusion. Galatians 4, 28. And you, dear brothers and sisters, are children of the promise just like Isaac. No. 
I, I don't think that is the question. But then it says, there is no longer Jew or Galatians or Gentiles, slave or free, male or female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. God bless us all. Jesus is passing this way, hey, this way, this way. Jesus is passing this way, hey, he's passing this way right now.